Now, there are a number of ways to determine the greatest common factor, or GCF, for two numbers. Now, the better that you are with your times tables, the easier it is to recognize GCFs, and the more of these questions that you can just do in your head. Given that, there's always a point where the numbers become large enough where even the best times table students would like to have another way to determine the GCF, a more methodical way. So let's look at a methodical way of determining the GCF, and this method uses factor trees and a Venn diagram. Example 1. Find the greatest common factor of 42 and 36. Now this one has small enough numbers that you might be thinking back to your times tables and thinking, I can do this one in my head. Nevertheless, it's not a bad question to demonstrate our method here. So let's do that. Remember that a Venn diagram is typically shown as circles, and in this case, two circles, one for the 42 and one for the 36. And we overlap the circles. So we're ready to insert the data. Next, to generate some data, that is our prime factors, we'll use factor trees, one for each of our numbers. So for 42, we can break it down in a number of ways, but maybe you see that 42 is the same as 6 times 7. And then we can further break down the 6 into 3 times 2. Now we can't break down the 7 anymore, it's already a prime number, so we're left with 3 prime numbers. Three, two, and seven. Let's switch to our 36. For 36, we may notice that we can divide it in two. Two times 18 equals 36. Now the 18 can also be divided into two times nine. And then the nine we notice can be divided into three times three. So we're left with four prime numbers. 2, 2, 3, and 3. So it's time for our next step. We put our prime factors into our Venn diagram. So first, let's identify the factors that belong in both of these circles. They'll go into the overlap region here. We see a 2 in both of these factor trees. So let's place a 2 in the overlap area. That way, the 2 is in both circles. So we're done with those 2s, and we can underline them in both factor trees to show that we're done with them. I also notice a 3 in both groups. So let's place the 3 in the overlapping area. And that way, the 1, 3 is in both circles. So we're done with those 3s, and we underline both of them to show that we're done. The rest of the numbers don't have partners in the other camp, so we know that we're done with the overlap area. For the 7, it's only in the 42 circle, so we put it here. This 2 is only in the 36 circle, and not in the 42 circle, so it'll go here. And the factor 3 belongs only in the 36 circle, so we'll put it here. And we're done our Venn diagram. So our last step is simply to multiply all the items in our overlap region. In this case, we have a 2 and a 3, so 2 times 3 is 6. And now we know that the greatest common factor of 42 and 36 is 6. Example 2. Find the greatest common factor of 60 and 84. Now this one uses bigger numbers, so you might find the Venn diagram even more useful here. For a Venn diagram, we'll draw our two circles, one for the 60 and one for the 84, and we make sure these circles overlap. To generate some data, our prime factors, we'll use our factor trees, one for each number. For the 60, we can break it down a number of ways, but maybe you see that 60 is the same as 6 times 10. And then we can further break down the 6 into 3 times 2. And we can break down the 10 as 2 times 5. So we're left with 4 prime factors. 
3, 2, 2, and 5. Let's switch to the 84. And maybe we decide to divide this one in half. 2 times 42. And then 42 can be divided into 6 times 7. And 6 can be divided into 3 times 2. And we're left with 4 prime numbers. 2, 3, 2, and 7. Now it's time to put our prime numbers into our Venn diagram. First, we identify the factors that go into both circles, as they'll go into the overlap region. We see a 2 in both groups, so let's place the 2 in the overlap area. That way the 2 is in both circles, so we're done with those 2s, and we underline them to show that we're done with them. In fact, we have another set of 2s here, so we'll put another 2 into the overlap area and underline them as being done. And I also see a 3 in both groups. So let's place the 3 in the overlap area, and we'll underline them. So what's not underlined here? Well, we have a 5, and it's in the 60 circle, but not in the 84, so it will go here. And the 7 is in the 84 circle, but not in the 60 circle, so it will go over here. So we have all of our numbers into the Venn diagram. Our final step is simply to multiply all the items in that overlap region. In this case, we have two twos and a three. So two times two is four, times three is 12. So now we know that the greatest common factor of 60 and 84 is 12. In this tutorial, we explored a method for determining the greatest common factor for two numbers using both factor trees and a Venn diagram. Now it's certainly not the only way to determine a greatest common factor, but it's a solid way and it helps you stay organized. Basically, we use factor trees to identify all the prime factors, and then we organize those prime factors into a Venn diagram. And once organized, we simply multiply all the numbers in the overlap region of the Venn diagram, and that's your greatest common factor. If you don't have any numbers in the overlap area, then you don't have any common factors between those two numbers. That's it.